quick build to be honest with you the body was um, just using stand just literally a spear for nearly all of it so it didn't take more than I think the whole thing was about half an hour just to construct the core uh, anatomy when this is a very early stage of it um, the body is separated into the well, the body itself and uh, just some nails and at this stage it wasn't finished um, it was just the nails on the feet and then the first bit of detailing that I did was uh, around the face here you can see we've started to detail him didn't split this character up at all started with a literally a in a basic shape and then built up, used lots and lots of different reference um, but the core way that I detailed him I'll just do a little bit on, on this guy he's about level 3 um, so 3 levels of resolution now and if you look here and just use the um, I'm on paint at the moment so just use the sphere just to to, to go through so the, so the way most of the the detail was done was either scored into the surface like you can see here or or just adding in like this um actually the paint wasn't correct so like so so just very quickly adding in any surface lumps that way and then also what um, smoothing that down but with a very small smooth brush so it doesn't destroy some of the work that blobs out a little bit or smooths out the blob should I say and then the other way that I like to do it is a tiny little bit of inflate in some areas I don't do this a lot um, but just where I just want to remove some of that detail where each individual um, nodule and pimple um, is, is adding uh, too much definition. So that's where I got the basic um, structure uh, of, of the surface down. And then nearly all of the rest of it was turning it to surface. When it stuck to the surface, the smallest brush I can get. And then either on the surface or underneath the surface like so. And as small as I dare go. And it's very hard to get the right gradient with it. So I want more controls here to get this, um, to be able to get this down to a, to a level that's, that would work for me. And then I literally just worked around the whole surface, either positively, like so, and just built it up with some interesting shapes, or negatively. And then just carried on building, really, and just worked, worked away all the way across. And then the bit to get the, the, the spikes at the side, um, that was, I made some, some stamps, um, let's just go to my custom stamps, I've got far too many custom stamps now, um, let's have a look at what I use for this one, I just think it was one of these here, so I've got rid of surface, because we don't want to stick this to the surface, make sure symmetry is on take the thing that I've made like so and then just strategically start adding it in to complement what's already in there so that gives all of that nice underlying secondary uh, surface detail really and what I'm trying to do at every stage is just to find things that would um, add nice things to catch the light really to give more and more um, visual interest and more granularity for the um, for the for the for the final image really. Keep spinning it around where wherever needed, and then I think I did this a different way for the for the final, which I'll, I'll call up in a moment. Well, that's the way I got all of those sort of core shapes down and just slowly, slowly refining. And then going back in with those other um, methods that I said, which is just take, then taking it away. So on these now, because they're super smooth, I'd then just go back with, go back to a basic brush with negative and surface on, and then just add that visual surface detail back in and then blend it in if 
if it needs it or give it extra creases and crease lines and that's quite easy way to build up that lovely so before you've ever gone into the paint really before you even thought about going into adding you can get it right at this stage if the forms right and then the service details right then the paintings just going to be a whole load of fun so I mean the ears you can do pretty much anything you want here one nice one that I like to do that emulates a brush that I've got in ZBrush that everybody uses is just do a lot that way and a lot that way and that's just instant peppering of, 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 of skin so if you look what happens here just quickly all in the same direction and then an opposite direction and that gives you instant elephant skin if you look at the skin on the back of your hand if you're anywhere near my age anyway you'll be able to see what I mean because you get that crisscross effect of skin so never have patches like this because this is so CG so as long as you pepper it with something um, you're going to get some nice break up of the surface it's better to have anything on the body there we haven't even touched at this stage you can see it's still low res so I wouldn't have done much of this on, on that bit at that stage. Um, and then obviously any kind of final veins or... I didn't do many of these to, if I'm honest with you. I normally try and do a lot of vein on the surface. But with this one for some reason I chose not to. Quite like that effect and that just gives you a nice uh, you can do a couple coming out of the nose obviously break the symmetry um, I, I didn't at, at, well, I'm not doing it here um, you can go back in and if you've got any area that needs defining that's a great one to help see how I'm noodling now this is the problem you start I'm, I'm noodling on a video where I'm just showing you what I'm doing that just shows how addictive this program is um, okay, so that's how I got the surface detail of, it, of him. Um, so the next video, I'll um, I'll just have a look at the uh, the paint. So. Here he is in the next stage. So this is I've done the same thing as I've shown on the head, um, down on the body now. So I've done a, a pass of that, and at this stage I probably will just work through and do the surface detailing on on the body. And um, this is still quite an early one. Um, Ninety percent of the work on this guy uh, was the surface detailing, um, and and the painting. So all I did with the painting is you can see really, they can see all that underlying shapes are all still there from the previous video. Um, I just literally went in, um, let's just change. Those eyes we used a missive. <laughs> interesting, it's in the wrong layer, which is an interesting effect. So let's just make sure I'm on the right layer this time. There we go. So the eyes, you know, a little bit of a little bit of shine in those eyes with the emissive really helps. Um, and I haven't done any of the final overlay colours here. So what I tend to do is do do a base colour and then work up um, the greens, the reds. So I always start with red underneath. You can still see lots of pinks and reds inside the, in the body there, and then bring that up with the greens, and then slowly get finer and finer and finer. And then one of the final ones that I like to do is just go to paint pick a nice um, orangey fiery red so this is where the, the subsurface scattering effect comes in and that's like the blood coming through the ears um, which is very very difficult to do in something like this um, you can see here now let's just get him really really low res and just the peppering of red back over the the areas where I want it to look like the sun's coming through his ears uh, but go as light as possible and as careful as possible you can easily go if I just show you now you can just go crazy with it and before you know it you've gone way over the top but because you've got all those nice sort of layers already um, this is just really overlaying you see how green it is there you want to maybe add a bit more 
across the top. You can, I mean, you can change the entire colour of this creature very quickly without actually repainting them from the start. Lots of pinks inside the deeper areas. And I noticed actually with this, um, a lot of the references that people used, that there was actually a lot of deeper blues in here than you would imagine. Um, so I would carefully go in over the tops of the dark greens and maybe add some darker darks just to add some of the, the contrast. The contrast that you see in VR, f f the view that I've got, is a lot more um, saturated than you'll get on the videos that I can show. And if someone's watching it who hasn't tried a VR headset yet, you, you, you just can't get a, a feel of what the, the artist is seeing until you've been in VR. Um, and trust me, it's just a whole other level of, of experience once you're actually in there yourself. Well, that's how I got the, the, the skin effect there. Um, and it started to look really nice at this stage. So, And then I just really just um, chopped off bits of the arm. So because I hadn't gone ridiculously high res, I still could chop him up, um, which I'll just show you with. Turn, I was turn mirror off now at this stage. Um, Get the right tool. So go to cut um, with mirror off and then just slice through certain limbs. So, as you can see, it takes a minute, but um, it's not like when you're doing huge, big, um, huge, big models with multiple resolutions. You can, like, they can take ages to cut. Um, got lots of little issues down here, and obviously, the nails will want to move now. So for now, I'll just um, just delete all of these because we don't need them for what we're doing. Take surface off, large brush, negative. I'll just clean up some of this stuff. Just got lots of peppering in the scene there. I just bang my hand on the desk there. Um, there we go. So you can see how quickly you can. Let's just let's just really chop him up and make him make him sing a little bit with the. So, it's going to do a bit of damage at the back, so um, I would be really careful how I cut this. And you can see what I mean here now, because I've damaged the buttock there quite a bit. Look at that inside, that's really interesting, with it being voxel based. It's remembered the original colours, um, and you can so you can almost layer it like, um, like rock, um, if that means anything to anyone who... I don't know what rock is. Um, let's just bring this leg up, and then I'll chop that off a bit more. And, th and then when I finish this kind of stuff, I normally go back in um, and reattach it, and then and then fill in the gaps really, because obviously I'm I'm doing a lot of damage um, to the creature. You can see there that the, the knee would need to be rebuilt. Um, but because I've not gone ridiculously high resolution. Um, this kind of posing is is quite easy um, um, at this stage. Again, it's frustrating that you've got to keep moving stuff um, like this if you've got it on separate layers. So, but if you keep the layer structure. In such, you know, in a really organised fashion, you can, you can do this quite easily. It's not, it's not a huge problem. Um, that arm, there, for example, we could bring it round and start. It, it, obviously, the the anatomy is not going to be working correctly at at this stage, so you'd have to work that out as you as you start posing your character and um, just because a muscle swings back it just doesn't look the same anymore it, you know it fundamentally changes so well you have to learn a lot of that um anyway so that's where your anatomy classes are essential whether you're doing monsters like this or any kind of creature anatomy whatsoever you need to understand anatomy um, as well as you can irrespective of the discipline you're gonna or the, the software you're gonna or even pencil and pen or whatever it just Anatomy is the key to everything, really. Um, see how it's damaged at the back there? I'd have to rebuild all of that, um, which you would expect, really. So, but it's you know it helps you once once you're starting getting into the posing side of things. 
you're into a whole nother world of, of, of bringing your characters to life. So it's, you can see anyway how it's, how we will go with that one. So let's move it to the last stage now. So um, we went to um, this guy. Get rid of our little fella there. And here he is. So this was the final stage. So this was painted up. We've got some really fun stuff in the scene now. So this here is um, uh, a reference image. Um, and all I did was put it as a PNG and just uh, popped it in the scene. And then I used it in the actual piece of artwork, which is great. It's just so much fun to do. Um, and then uh, on this hand, if you, on your tool hand, if you then go to the green button for settings and then hit move with sculpt, you're going to get it to travel with your, your your sculpt, which is fantastic and so much so much um, potential to make f you know f fun displays. Basic rocks just out of the out of the uh, out of basic medium pack didn't do any work at all. Literally minutes just popping them together. A couple of tubes for wires and and then it's all about the the, the creature and the painting really in in this one. And um, the whole thing was about um, I think I've got the full recording, but it's about five or six hours. Um, of which three or four of those is is detailing, so it's not it's not a long job. And then uh, great, one of the great things to do. We can get rid of that plane now. Just throw it over my head. It is now mess around with the lighting. So this is where you get your power lighting, where you really bring your character to life. Um, and the comp that I did for the main comp was basically a picture taken from. Um, I'll show you a picture taken. In fact, let's just do it. It's easier easiest way to show you is say we have him there and then we'll take a bit photo but we'll bring the camera to about here and set it to world so it doesn't move change the field of view all the way down you can you should be able to see the camera and the gremlin there he may go the level of detail that may, may start to, to box a little bit as in if you go all the way out, you're getting level of detail and uh, compression and then bring him back, you might still see that rebuilding. I don't know whether you can see that on here, but the camera only sees it at full resolution. So if you see any damage coming on the, the surface of the of the creature, don't worry. So there we go. That's say that for example, that was the first picture. And we just you can hit the button here, camera button, or your trigger, and there's a picture. So next thing to do, pull back and then let's get rid of this again. And then move our lighting to another position. Trigger, pull back, move it to, I always go for rim lights first, try and get a set of really nice rim lights. Like so you can see the rim coming in from the right now. And don't worry about the fill line. The, the others just go for the, the power, the, the really iconic sets of lighting at first. There we go. And then, oops, moved in there. That would have destroyed it if I was going to do a, um, um, a set of images for the Photoshop. I think that's something to be really careful of. You can't move him if you're going to do a set of lighting um, images. And then the last one would have been uh, to bring it right over the front, change the settings of, of the um, light to increase the cone width to maximum, brightness to maximum and then go to sun color sun brightness maximum as well and that gives you a full blown out fill light um so like overhead front like that and that gives you a good set of definition of all the colors and painting and then with the others overlaid that uh, that really it gives you everything you need to composite that in photoshop and i'll do a little tutorial on that to, to follow this but uh there he is as a little gremlin um you can see him fully lit there Obviously, we wouldn't render him like this, but you can see the bright light helps, and it shows a lot of the uh, of the detail there, really, quite nicely. So, so what I've done with this guy is um, I've already uh, made this one up. Um, I've taken all of those photographs and I've popped them all inside Photoshop, as you can see, and then slowly but surely, I've taken. Let's turn all of these off for a moment. 
So I know there's enough. I'll go right the way back to the beginning. There we go. So with nothing in the scene. And these are the basic photographs that I've just taken. These again, these are taken earlier, so they're slightly different, but they've got the same idea, different different lights and scenarios um, across. And then what I've done is I've started to add things in over the top. And I'm just using a combination of, um, on most of them, it was either multiply, screen, or, or overlay. And then I find, I find a combination that suits everything that I'm trying to do. So for here, for example, I've basically got a black and white image. So let's just turn that off. And we've got multiply set. So if we just set that to normal, you can see it's just a black and white one with a 67% opacity. Knock it up. You can see it's just a black and white image. There's some color here because that's on some of these overlaid layers. So that just gives me a real control of the of the contrast of the scene in, in certain ways. You can just put an adjustment layer on the top. Um, so I'll knock it back to where it was. I'll set it back to multiply and see how intense that gives you. Pumps up that contrast quite a little bit in the shadow areas, really, which is which is helpful. And let's add a few more things on. So here we've got this is just a color balance. So I'll turn this on and off, and you'll see. So that's a very blue. I just put an adjustment layer with a lot of blue in it that brings back some of the the kind of darker darks really inside here. You can see that that's that's made those darker areas a bit more punchy. Um, and then we've added in another one here so this layer is basically um, a red layer so it's, it's the same layer as below with the blue adjustment layer but we've made it a very punchy red and then we've masked it we've put a mask layer in and we've just left the red around the ears just to give it that brightness and um, you can see that the glow and um, almost a little bit of a fake um, subsurface scattering a little bit really um, but nothing more than just a, a punch of red for the ears um, and then we've added a highlight pass, so you can see there that really adds to some. If you haven't got, if you haven't picked up enough light in in the um, Oculus Medium uh, work, then it's quite handy just to punch up some nice uh, highlights, depending on the light scenario. So we've got uh, a number of, of of images with different light sources. So we're picking based on those light sources. Now we're pushing light from the left or the right or a rim light, and a lot of obviously a lot of light from the top. And then just a little pass of, you can see there, this one's not finished yet. But this is just a pass of, of almost a vignette in, in a way. So we would just put like a blurred um, vignette around those certain areas just to mask off anything that we don't want. And that's pretty much it. So you've, you've, you've gone from um, a very, uh, let me just see if I've got one here, you know, I've got almost a, a lot flatter look. Um, here you can see all the different ones. That one was actually quite good. Um, that, one, that one was just two layers, so it wasn't too far off. But obviously, it's nowhere near the the, the, the level we got to in a few minutes by doing by doing this fellow. So it's so easy to use medium for this sort of concepting and, and roughing out a character. The whole thing, um, start to finish, took about four hours, something like that, four or five hours. Um, so I started it. I've got the recording of it, and it was about one o'clock in the afternoon. It was done. Um, so like finished by tea time and I've just done this recording the day after so for a, for a concept until for me um, it's just superb it's just so cool for, for, for roughing and throwing up out ideas like this um, and something that you, you really need to think about adding into your tool set so I hope that helps